Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, aspiring indie developers. My name is the Almighty Zentaco, and this is another tutorial for Click Team Fusion 2.5. I have a link down below so you can download it and find it if you don't know what that is. And if you do know what that is, then you are in the right place. Today we're going to be learning how to make a menu. Um, it's pretty easy, so don't expect this one to be super duper crazy hard. We're going to make a uh, menu that lets us select some options and it's going to have a sound effect as well as the options that are selected will light up and grow. Okay. Uh, so with that being said, let's get down to brass tacks. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is right click and insert an object. This is going to be a backdrop, which I'm going to import an image, which is simply a background for my main menu. And then I'm going to insert an active object. And this is going to be my um, first option. So we're going to call this option one. Now the uh, option is going to need some alterable values. We're going to need an ID value. We are going to need two more values, a target X and a target Y. <clears throat> um, this is because we are going to be expanding and contracting this uh, uh, object based on whether or not it's selected. The ID is going to be one for this one. Each one's going to have a different ID. That's how we're going to know which object has been selected. Um, and we also need to give this thing a, where is it, uh, a qualifier. So all of our options need to have qualifiers. We'll just give it qualifier one. Boom. All right, so uh, I'm going to import some art for this. Going to import it as an animation. Now what this is, is I have two frames, okay? First frame is just the word start. Second frame is the word start with an outline, a white outline. And that is because whenever the uh, word is selected, the option is selected, it is going to switch to from frame one to frame two, giving it an outline. So we're gonna go in to the directions options here and under speed set zero, because we do not want this to animate by itself. So I'm gonna place this here. I'm gonna resize it down a bit. Then I'm gonna clone it. And this should have now all of our options. So. Let's go ahead and go into the ID and set that to two. Oh, wait, made a mistake. Uh, target X and target Y need to be one by default. So make sure you have that set. Okay, so I'm going to import my next animation, which is the option options. Again, zero speed, but that's it's already set because we're copying this, okay? All we need to do is uh, put this in position and we're gonna shrink it down a bit. And we're going to clone it again. This is our third option. Going to import option number three, which is the word credits. And this can be whatever the heck you want. These are just, you know, different options for your game, different things you can select. Okay, I uh, need to make sure that ID is number three. <clears throat> going to clone this object again. Boom, boom, boom. This is going to be our fourth option. So let's make that ID number four. And uh, let's go ahead and give it uh, option number four, which is going to be delete the hard drive. I know, it's just, you know, we're being jokesy. All right, so we have start, options, credits, and delete hard drive. Uh, so we have option number one, ID number one, ID number two, ID number three, and ID number four. Okay, so now we're gonna need a way to store uh, what has been selected and all we need to do is have an alterable value for this. We're gonna make it a global value, which I have already set up. So go ahead and add a global value, call it selected, and by default have it be one. All right, so we're gonna go in now and uh, add some code. So we're gonna stick in a comment just uh, just to make it easier to read. So insert a comment and we're going to just say um, select controls. Okay, so we're gonna make it so that when you press down or up on the keyboard that it um, changes what is selected. So go ahead and click um, the keyboard and upon pressing a key, that key is down. Go ahead and copy that and uh, double click on it and we're gonna change that from down to up. Okay, so now whenever uh, 
down arrow is pressed, we are going to change the alterable, or sorry, the global value. We're going to add to it. We're going to add one to it. And whenever up is pressed, we're going to subtract one from it. So change a global value, subtract one from selected. All right, so now um, what this is going to do is when we when we press down, it's going to add to the ID number. When we press up, it's going to subtract. So we only have four options, one, two, three, and four. So we don't want the numbers to be able to go negative, and we don't want them to be able to go past this here. So we are going to um, clamp it. Clamp options. <clears throat> so how we're going to do that is we're going to ask, if the uh, alterable value, or sorry, the global value of selected is lower or equal to zero. And if it is, we are going to then make it the option this four. So that means like if you are on start and you press up, it's going to then cycle to this one. And the opposite is gonna be true as well. When we are on delete hard drive and we press down, it's gonna cycle back to start. So <clears throat> whenever it's uh, lower or equal to zero, then we are going to change the global value of selected to four. And whenever it is, uh, whenever it's five or greater, so we will say uh, selected is greater or equal to five, then we're gonna make it one. All right, and now we are going to change selections based on state. <clears throat> Meaning if it is selected, we are going to have it highlight. And if it's not selected, we're going to have it unhighlight. So we're going to do this. Now the order of operations is very important here. So click on the group one. And we're going to ask if the alterable value of ID is equal to the global value of selected. So that means if the ID is selected, meaning we are currently selecting the ID that we want, the option we want, then we are going to change the animation frame. So go to change animation frame of number one of the uh, group of events one, or sorry, group of objects one. We're gonna change this to uh, highlighted and highlighted was our first. First frame is always zero. So zero is un unselected, one is, is our highlight. So. So when it's highlighted as one, copy this event. We're gonna edit this a bit. <clears throat> We're gonna say, is ID different than selected? That means that the current object is not selected. We are going to change the animation to zero. So if done correctly, we should now be able to uh, cycle through it. Let's find out. Start options, credits, delete hard drive. And I press down, it goes back to start. Let's try up, worked, worked perfect. So now all we got to do is, um, here, let's add a sound effect. We'll do that right here. We will play select. I'm going to browse from a file. We got something called select. So whenever we click up or down, we now have a sound that plays. Let's check it out. Sweet. Okay, so the last thing we're going to want to do is uh, make those options get bigger whenever they are selected and shrink whenever they are not selected. So now what we're going to need to do is uh, have the options expand and contract based on their state. So if the ID is selected, we want this, them to grow. So we are going to, uh, under here where it says ID of one equals selected, we are going to set the alterable value of target X and target Y both to be 1.5, making them bigger. So go ahead and do that. Say so set uh, alterable or target X and both target Y to 1.5. And when they are not selected, when they're different than selected, we're going to set those to one, thereby shrinking them. Target to one, and set target Y to one. So now we need to make that uh, expand and contract happen, so we're going to do that with an always event. So we're going to always set the, uh, under group one, we're going to always set the scale, uh, both X scale and Y scale, so select uh, set X scale to the value, no, sorry, to X scale plus, and we need a parentheses, and we're going to get the value of target X. We're subtracting that from the value, nope, sorry, subtract, subtracting that from uh, get X scale. Close uh, parentheses and multiply this by 0 0.1. This is called a tween 
I have covered this many times in depth, so if you uh, want more information about it, go ahead and watch my other videos. So that covers the X scale. We're going to select one for maximum quality, and we're going to do the exact same thing for the Y scale. So we're always going to set the scale Y scale. Get the value, or sorry, get the scale, Y scale of one. Add to that target Y. And I know this might be confusing. I like I said, I go into I go in depth. Uh, anyways, track target Y from the current Y scale. And you multiply that by a modifier. And what modifier you use will affect the speed at which it, it expands and contracts. Again, one. So this should work unless we did something wrong. Let's take a look at it. All right, it's perfect. As you see, it does um, it does kind of expand out bigger than it should. But you know, you can just change this, the initial size of, of the option, and it'll, it won't get off the screen. So the last thing we want to do is allow the player to make selections. So select option. And that means, um, <clears throat> essentially, when you press a button and an option is selected, we're going to do something. In this case, we're just going to go to different frames. I'm not actually going to send us to those frames. I'm just going to show you how you would do that. So we would say, if uh, compared to a global value, if selected equals 1, and the keyboard, upon pressing a key, we're going to make that enter, we will play a sound effect which uh, we're going to get from a file, and that's going to be click. And you would need to play these over frames to hear it, um, because otherwise it'll shut it off as soon as you switch frames. <clears throat> but so this will allow us to, uh, if we do this here, this will we want this to go to our uh, start. So we want to go to whatever our start frame was. So we would say whatever, like uh, go to storyboard controls and say jump to frame, and then pick your frame. We don't have any, any frames. We could just use a calculation here and be like jump to frame 5. If, if frame five was our you know start frame and we would just copy this and for our different options change the selected ID so select two what is select two select two is options so then we would just change five to whatever our option frame is which could be like six like I said they don't really exist but um, so then we'll have select three select three is what select three is our credits well we'll make credits frame seven and lastly, we got delete hard drive, and uh, we would say, okay, selection is four, and then we would jump to frame eight, and on frame eight, we would uh, delete your hard drive. <laughs> oh, that's, that's my dog. Shut up, Shade! So, um, yeah, guys, that pretty much covers it. It really isn't that hard. Um, this is how you make a simple start menu. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please feel... Shade! Please feel free to leave them below, and I will try to get back to you. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.